I think this is Miss Hardy, so let me go ahead and uh, pick up this call. You are on with the ruckus. Who am I speaking to? This is Heather Hardy. I'm Devin Hi, Fine. Heather Hardy. We are now joined by uh, Heather Hardy, who is a recent WBC champ, who uh, will be talking about uh, to us about her uh, recent victory. How are you doing, Heather? I'm doing very well. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Of course, on the line with me is uh, Ryan Divin. So we're going to just ask, uh, ask you a few questions, talk about your recent victory, and uh, let the fans hear from you, you know, about the fight and future plans going forward. Awesome. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Heather. Um, nice to finally get to talk to you. Yeah. All right. So for those of you listening in, um, if you have questions for Heather, you can tweet them to me or Ryan. Um as you may know, Heather recently became the, the WBC Super Bantamweight, International Super Bantamweight Champion, and uh, she fought on October 15th against Crystal Hoy. So, you know, Ryan, why don't you go ahead and take it away, and I will uh, keep up with our Twitter listeners. Right. Um, uh, you won a majority decision that, that should have been unanimous. Um, yeah. I know you were surprised but when you heard that that, that one judge, they, they called it a draw. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, th- I thought you looked good in the fight. Um, it was definitely, uh, although I can't, I can't speak from you know eyewitness account because I, I wasn't there to see it, and then I don't think it was televised. But um, an improvement over the uh, Jackie Trivolino performance. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, I definitely won all the rounds. I was really surprised, not even surprised, but it was alarming that there could be a disparity in scoring the way that, that there was. So, um, But everyone who saw it, myself included, this is, was by far one of my most decisive and best wins that I've I've had yet. Yeah, so now that you've, you've got this, um, you know, WBC international title, you know, I guess that, that, that should put you in the uh, the world title mix. I think going into the fight, you were already rated in the, uh, the top ten. By the way, yeah, I think you were rated number seven. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, are, are there any, um, uh, you have any opponents, you know, lined up to, to advance in the WBC ratings? Because I'm, I'm looking at them right now, and, uh, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of compelling fights there. Um, you know, people mm-hmm. that we know, um, one of them, uh, has, uh, you know, called you out, uh, in person and online, uh, quite a few times. Um, Shelly Vincent, mm-hmm. I think she's rated number four. Um, right. Is that fight ever going to happen? Well, here's the thing, and uh, Shelly uses this as like her publicity thing to make people get like you know attention for it and everything. And I, I don't pay much mind to it because it's not a fighter's decision who they fight, particularly when fighters are signed. Me and Shelly both are signed to promotional contracts with our promoters, who. Her shows are in Rhode Island. My shows are in New York City. And she keeps saying she wants this fight, but her promoters aren't willing to to back it, to fund it, to find this, quote-unquote, middle ground fighting in Connecticut and Foxwoods that she keeps talking about. Her promoters aren't backing her. And my promoter is like, you know what, Heather? We're making money here. I'm not letting this little bitch run into my business and tell me what she wants and dictates how I spend my money. If her promoter wants to put up the money to do the fight, we'll do it. I mean, if I mean, I'll beat the shit out of her in my backyard for all I care. But oh, okay. the bottom line is that this is over promoters funding the money to get this done somewhere in middle on a middle ground, and her promoters are not doing it. She is saying all these kinds of things online that Really have no backing, have no meat to it. She says, "Yeah, I want to fight you, Heather." Okay, show me a contract. Tell me where we're fighting. Don't just tell me you want me to fight and expect Lou to put up all the money. He's like, "Fuck you." Okay, that, that's a fair response. Um, I know you um have done a, a, a lot of work with uh, Alicia Ashley in the gym. Um, she's sort of inspiration to you. Um. Recently, a world champion, probably the oldest female world champion in boxing at the time. Right. Um, did you catch her fight with Jackie Nava? Of course, I watched that fight. I thought she wanted eight rounds to two. 
Yeah, I also thought she won. Um, uh, I had it, I think, six to four. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ed, do, do you ever think of getting revenge for uh, your, uh, you know, Jim? Ashley, Ashley is still in there fighting. She can get revenge all on her own. She don't need her little sister to come fight her battles. I promise you that. <laughs> All right, that's that's good. Um, so, um, what, what's your record now? Uh, eleven and eleven and zero. Eleven and zero. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Have all your fights been in New York so far? Yeah, yeah. I've I've done all my fights in in Brooklyn and Manhattan. So, um, you know, if, if bigger opportunities arise against, you know. You know, uh, let's say established, um, you know, uh, w- uh, female boxers. You know, maybe former world champions that that they, you know, but they want you to travel to fight them. Um, would you be open to that? Absolutely, but you know, the old saying goes: if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. And if I'm making money here, then I'm not going to travel unless there's something in it for me. Because yes, I do it because I love women's boxing. I love fighting. I love uh, promoting and and giving the fans great shows, but I also like putting food on the table. So, <laughs> yeah, so true. Yeah, we get it both ways. And right now I'm getting lots of opportunities in New York City. But, of course, if if, if something arises somewhere else for me that is going to prove to be better for me financially or long-term career-wise, I mean, we spoke about doing fights in Ireland that just never really materialized, but... You know, I'm I'm open for anything that's going to uh, further myself and further the sport, that's for sure. Um, it's just, um, you know, a lot of female fighters in the United States have, have, have talked about, you know, the struggles to, to, to get a, a reasonable paycheck. Is is that not yeah. a problem for you? No, it's, it of course is a problem for me. I mean, I'm... Even at five fights a year, I'm still making under the poverty line with my boxing. I'm still working, you know, two two other jobs just to support me and my daughter. So I could never right now at this stage of the game consider boxing to be uh, a, like a career. The, the thing of it is is that it's not the people like me with ten fights. Because if you consider me like with a male who has ten fights, or any other female boxer with a male fighter has 10 fights, the difference in pay is not, like, super alarming. It's pretty typical, you know, scrapping coming up. But it's it's the top of the line. It's the fact that the world champion females are making nowhere near the money that the world champion males are, and we don't have the same kind of um, network backing or sponsorship backing that the guys get either. So those are the things that we fight for. I, no one would expect a fighter with ten fights, whether male or female, to be making enough money to survive with this as a full-time job anyway. Yeah, it seems um, the checks uh, seem to be bigger in other countries because that's that's the world. Uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, the you know the top talent in the United States tends to go to Mexico, maybe Argentina, yes. you know, places where you know they show female boxing on TV, like live. Yes. And it's, it's not even female boxing, but male boxing either, because the sport itself is a dying sport in America, so it's not it's not paid or or financed. If you look at the sponsors, you know the the companies that are on the rings in all the big fights, it's the same people who've been sponsoring boxing since you know the the fifties and the sixties and the seventies. It's, it's it's no nothing new, nothing exciting here. And people are networks, TV. They're, they're investing money in it overseas, and that's why people are going over there trying to make some money. Cool. Although cool. that, although you, you know, you are finding your your niche in, in New York City. Have you ever considered crossing over into MMA like so many female boxers are now doing? I tell you, I started out kickboxing before I boxed. I kickboxed, and I actually did kickboxing while I was in the amateurs. I won two titles while I was fighting, doing nationals with boxing and everything. I love kicking. I miss it so much, but I could never um, really get into the ground aspect of MMA. Not for any reason other than I don't. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. So the cho- the option for me to go to MMA would be no, because I don't like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. And also I wanted to ask you, uh, recently I know there was a documentary that was done on you directed by Natasha Burma. I haven't had a, an opportunity to watch it yet. It was a featured film at the um, at the third annual Shadowbox Film Festival. Is there some place those who are fans of yours and, and our listeners who are tuning in where we can catch the documentary and learn a little bit more about, you know, you have a tremendous backstory and, you know, the struggles to keep fighting and, you know, balance your life with these things that you, as you've already alluded to. Where can we find this documentary about you? Oh, yes. Thank you for asking. It's going to be shown um, November 16th in Chelsea at the School of Visual Arts. And I'll have uh, in the theater, I'll have all the information on my Twitter and my Facebook and my Instagram posts where you can purchase tickets and there will be another screening also in December at, like you said, at the Shadowbox Film Festival. So it's going to be making us New York around um, November 16th and then the beginning of December. So we're really excited for that. It's going to be my first. I saw it on my laptop, but I'm really excited to see it on the big screen. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely have to stay connected with you so we can get your information so we can uh, post about it on the Thank site. Thank you. Ryan, yeah, I was yeah, I'm, I was curious what what you know. Could you give us any? Um, I don't want to say spoilers, but just uh, just just some pieces of what you know the documentary will cover. Sure, I mean, well, the the main idea about it is that is that there's a lot that goes into the sport other than just fighting and winning. You know, fighting and winning sometimes is the easy part, but becoming being a professional fighter and a single mother having to work full time and put your kids through school and make sure the bills are paid and make sure you sell all your tickets, make sure you train. I mean, balancing all that is like I wear six or eight hats every day. And most most women who fight, um, whether or not they have kids or it's it's the same story. There are so many things and responsibilities that come along with just fighting and winning. Or fighting and being good. Yeah, sounds yeah, sounds uh, like the uh, American dream there. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, um, uh, best of luck with that and uh, your professional career. Um, I've been watching since I don't know, um, pretty much since you started. I think I seen your first <laughs> fight. Yeah, I probably probably Thanks, just seen Ryan. your first fight. <laughs> So, I, you think know, I'll you keep I think you did. I think you wrote about me after my first fight, if I remember right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're always fun to watch, and um, thank you. Know, you. Ho- hopefully, you know, when, when someday when um, uh, one of these uh, uh, network um, heads, um, you know, gets some common sense and, and realizes that um, f- uh, female boxing is, is, is entertaining and worth putting on TV, at least yeah. on the under, at least on the undercard, you know. Um, if not on the main event, um, yeah. you know, I I, I'm sure happen. I'm sure you'll be one of those girls. Thanks, Ryan. For those that are listening who want to keep up with you, Heather, you know, share with us your Instagram, your Facebook, all the ways we can stay connected with you. So on Twitter, you can get me at at Heather Hardy Box, and I'm on Instagram at Heather the Heat, and on Facebook just Heather <laughs> Heather Hardy. And you know, I have all the info for my my fights, my the, the film coming up. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. You know, congratulations again on uh, your recent WBC victory. We look forward mm-hmm. to seeing you back out there again and checking out the documentary. So thank you. Um, and you know, hopefully, maybe we can buy some tickets and give them away to the, on the show to somebody who's living out in your area. Yeah, that sounds really cool. All right. Thanks again, Heather. Thanks for joining us. All right. Have a good night. Uh, You too. Bye-bye.